Welcome, 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 geeks and nerds, girls and boys, to another all-new edition of Geeks Me Radio. Today we are joined by one of my favorite guests, Susan Eisenberg, the voice of Wonder Woman. She's on live. If you'd like to call in, toll-free 844-855-1380. Call in, say hi to Susan. We're going to give away a copy of Justice League vs. Fatal 5 to one lucky caller. Stand by. We're talking to you. And if you're driving around the greater St. Louis area, hearing us on 105.3 FM and 1380 AM, thank you for tuning in. If you're out there in the world streaming this online via the World Wide Web, thanks for finding us there. I know a lot of you are. And I also would like to thank those of you who download this in the podcast form. You're hearing us after the fact on Google Play, iTunes, SoundCloud, Podomatic, Player FM, or wherever you get your podcast from. Thanks for finding us there. Uh, we are joined now by, I always say, my very favorite guest. She knows it. Uh, all of you who listen know it. She's the Steve Martin of Geeks Me Radio because she's co-hosted this show with me so many times. <laughs> Susan Eisenberg, how are you? I'm well. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And it's, it's kind of nice to be referred to as a co-host. I'll, I like that. Yeah, I mean, you you might as well be at this point because you, uh, you do more of the lifting on the show than I do whenever you're on. All the fans <laughs> want to call in and talk to you. It's great. I just sit back and take calls. <laughs> well, you know I love radio. Look, I'm, I'm just such a radio geek, if you will. And um, I just love the idea of chatting on air and having people join in the conversation. And there are no cameras, which I really love. (laughs) And it's just all brilliant as far as I'm concerned. It's a lot of fun. There's really nothing like live radio because, like I said, you get the callers calling in. And I, I think I may have told you this. This my my show started out. It wasn't its own show. It was just a little segment embedded in a uh, weekly trivia show I did on a different station. And we took calls uh, from all over doing trivia. And then I started doing a segment called "It's All Geek to Me," where we took calls and uh, I gave away prizes for uh, if you were able to answer my geek trivia questions. And that's how this kind of started. Okay, so I never knew this. So this is very, you know what, let's make this show, let's take the show about you. <laughs> we talked about me and my career on all the other times. Let's talk about you and your radio career. Well, that's, I, I just, that, that's the extent of it right there. I just, I just shot the whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> I see that Jackie wrote in that um, you can't do better than a Steve Martin comparison. And I think she's absolutely right. You cannot. And I thank you for that. That's very true. Jackie's, uh, we always love uh, knowing Jackie's listening. Uh, we get, uh, we always get, and again, we get a lot of people listening when I have you on because uh, you're, you're so wonderful with your fans. Uh, everybody loves you, and it's just, it's a testament, I think, really to what you have done throughout your career. Okay, you're making me blush, first of all. And uh, <laughs> second, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I, like, it's a community. I feel that. I, I, I love I love that we're all in it together, and um, we're fans together, and that feels very special to me. So, um, you know, I just, I love the communication with everybody. It's important, and it's, you know, I hope that people realize that. I think they do, and we've actually got our first caller. We have James on the line. That's a good name. James, how are you? (laughs) Hey, I'm doing pretty well. This is James with the Watchtower Database. Hi, Susan. Hey, how are you? (laughs) Pretty good. (laughs) Um, I was actually just calling in because I saw the tweet for the first time, and uh, I was wondering what the most challenging uh, Wonder Woman episode was for you to voice, and what your least favorite Air Bud movie is. Um, so the the most challenging, none of it was that challenging for Justice League. I mean, it was challenging, but it wasn't the most challenging. The most challenging was doing Injustice, the game, because 
having to play her as such a baddie uh, did not come naturally to me. <laughs> Um, you know, because to me, she's always been so heroic. So to change that um, iteration was 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 definitely, you know, challenging. But the Justice League, I mean, having everyone together and playing as an ensemble, that, that never felt hard. It felt uh, intimidating at times. It felt um, thrilling at times. But it was never like a chore to do. Um, so, and I don't, what was the second question? Oh, just what your least favorite Air Bud movie is. <laughs> I have a least favorite Air Bud movie. <laughs> is that to say they're all good in your opinion? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I, I'm not going to go out on a limb here and say one or another. Uh, next question. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Air Bud movie? Um, Are you a fan of Air Bud? Because I, I didn't know this. I, I I guess I know you're a dog fan. Is that? Yes, yeah, huge. Huge dog fan and huge dog lover, but animal lover. I mean, I'm not only it's, it's really across the, the spectrum. I, I just love animals, you know, all of them. I mean, um, you know, I'm not such a huge fan that I can speak to this. So what's your favorite? I should ask you. Uh, probably the second one. Yeah, it's it's okay. definitely. No, I I really have no idea. It was just the gag. I'm just continuing the running gag. It's all done now. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for calling in and doing a gag. That was great. James, thank you very much. I've got your name and phone number. Uh, we're going to do a drawing for a copy of Justice League versus Fatal 5. So you are now in for that drawing. We'll do the drawing at the end of the show. Uh, and we're also celebrating the one-year anniversary of the DC Universe, their official launch. Um, so if you're following me on Twitter at geek to me Radio, if you retweet my pinned tweet and follow me, uh, you will be entered for that drawing, which we're going to do live on Periscope after this show. Um, are, are a lot of people, Susan, speaking of the DC Universe, um, they may be like younger or they didn't get to see as much of your work that you've done, the voiceover, and they're finding it now on DC Universe. Has anyone given you that uh, has anyone come at you like that and said, I just saw all these and they're great. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. Um, but I've also like promoted the heck out of it because I think it's a great deal. I mean, honestly, like no one's asking me to say this, but you can get so many of your favorites in one place, which I think is pretty brilliant. And, um, so when I talk to people about justice league or justice league versus the fatal five or any of the movies, um, that we did, you know, it's, I promote the state, you know, DC Universe online because I think that it's kind of brilliant what they've done. And I've been lucky enough to be on their show and DC Daily. And, um, you know, I'm a huge fan. I, 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 you know, I would love to um, say that so many people have told me they've seen Justice League there. But I think mostly a lot of people have, have seen it because, they grew up in a household that their parents watched it and they've been exposed to it. Either people have watched it from the original airing or people have discovered it through the DVDs and the Blu-ray more than anything um, because they've been shown it from their parents or their aunts and uncles. That's what I've been told. That's that. Those are my stories that I've heard. Um, but DC universe is young and it's only, like you say, it's only a year old. So I think that will change tremendously. And I love all the pictures you always take at the conventions. You have uh, little little girls coming up in Wonder Woman costumes. And I, I can only imagine that you voicing this role, that people know you, they associate you so closely, even though you've done many other voiceover roles, uh, to be associated with such a powerful female character that all these little girls uh, and even older girls associate you with this role must feel just tremendous. It is, and it's a gift. I mean, that's to be associated with anything that has had a positive impact in someone's life and means so much to people, you know, that that's exceedingly gratifying and I don't take it for granted. I mean, it's, it's something that I was given a long, you know, a while back in 2000 with the job. And, you know, the fact that you and I are talking about it now in 2019 is um, extraordinary. So yeah, it's, 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 it's very, very humbling and it's very emotional 
that the character has had the impact she's had. And, you know, yes, the little girls, little boys, um, and then a lot of adults. You know, the, this character has seen people through hard times, dark times, just like the Justice League show did. And I hear that over and over about how, you know, you're a part of somebody's childhood and that people ran home from school to watch it. And it was like a touchstone and it was a lifeline for people. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's really quite stunning to know that you've had that impact because you were in a show that people cared about so deeply. I know what that's like because I've had shows that have meant something to me. So the fact that I've been a small part of something that has meant something to so many people's lives is, uh, is very, very touching. That's why I think I've been such a proponent for the reunion, because I've heard from so many fans and I've met so many fans for whom the show has meant so much that it's hard not to care about creating something else now that, um, that, that pays homage to that, that, that care and love that people have placed in the show. And I know that was the big announcement at San Diego Comic-Con. I guess last year people were so excited because you were there with Kevin and uh, we they had the, uh, the the Justice League versus the Fatal Five announcement. Uh, and people were so excited. And I think that's just one step closer. I feel like maybe their Warner Brothers is kind of testing the waters to see, okay, is this going to go well? If it does, let's get the whole band back together. I know that's the hope of everyone who constantly tweets out the hashtag JL reunion, uh, that we are going to get all seven of you back and Andrea is going to come out of retirement to direct you all. Yeah, you know, it was actually at WonderCon. WonderCon, uh, sorry. When we, yeah, when we, no, no worries. And, um, you know, it's a battle uh, because I don't think that Warner Brothers was ever intending to do a reunion. And so, you know, it wasn't in um, their timeline. And I think that the, the force and the passion and the consistency of the fans um, has made it, uh, you know, brought it to the forefront. And I don't have any inside information, so I, I, it, it kills me to say that. I wish I could make the big announcement on your show, um, but I'm, I'm determined, and um, I intend to get some information in, in the very near future because it just means too much to me and to so many other people. To the cast, um, our entire cast is behind it. Andrea Romano, as you said, agreed that she'd come out of retirement to direct it. I know Bruce Tim uh, has said at WonderCon that he would be down to, to do it. So there's just this push for it in such a beautiful way that I can't, um, I, you know, I can't leave it alone at this point. It's become too important. And I will, you know, I just want this to happen so much for all of us. I really do. And the I fans hope the fans are... don't get. I hope they don't give up because it's been a long haul. I mean, Young Justice was was a huge push for yeah. them to come back, but they got it back. And and I think that this has gone on longer. Um, and without any word from up above, without any encouragement, except for well, I shouldn't say that because Bruce was huge encouragement at WonderCon. I didn't expect him to say that he would do another one. Um, so that was all I could have dreamed for. Um, but now it's like, okay, let's that raise the stakes, and now we're just waiting to hear something, anything from Warner Brothers. Hopefully we'll hear that soon. If you're listening to this right now, uh, you know, take on, take to Twitter, post a photo of the uh, Magnificent Seven, uh, and do that hashtag <laughs> JL Reunion. Let's get it out there and uh, make sure Warner Brothers hears us and uh, give us what we want. We're going to take our first break. We've got a couple calls on hold. Stand by. We're going to get to you after the break. We're talking all hour with Susan Eisenberg. Stand by. Hi, I'm Ken Trotter. I was the voice of the Green Arrow in the Justice League Unlimited. I play Scotty Baldwin on General Hospital. So when you're not watching General Hospital, listen to Geek to Me Radio. And if you missed that show previously, we had Wonder Arrow. We had Susan Eisenberg and Ken Schreiner on. Uh, Susan arranged all that, so we had to talk to both of them. 
And if you want to go back and check out the previous shows, we're uploaded and we're on iTunes, Podomatic, SoundCloud. If you do go to iTunes, just leave me a nice five-star review. Say something kind about the show. That always helps raise my visibility in their search engine, and we would appreciate that. Um, we talked before, obviously we mentioned this before, Susan, you've had, uh, you were able to get Ken on the show and the two of you sat down and talked to us. Um, but you've got the chance to work with a lot of great talent on the justice league. It, ridiculous. I mean, it was like, uh, I pinched myself every time I went to a session, I'm still pinching myself because I think that when you get hired to do a job like that, that is so, um, uh, you know, for this iconic character, that's so high profile, um, that's so beloved, you know, it's, it's, um, it's an honor. So the fact that I'm talking to you today is because of that character and because I got to voice her. So I never lose sight of that. If I'm at a comic con, it's because of her, it's because of justice league wonder woman. And, um, you know, that just, that is my gift that keeps on giving. That's Warner brothers and Bruce Tim and Andrea Romano, um, bestowing that on me in 2000. And, you know, here we are. So, the, the the people I got to meet, the, the cast, I mean, I still feel so connected to, to our cast, our original seven. And, you know, we're all still fighting the good fight for the reunion and we're all still in touch. And we all, um, you know, we text pictures to each other. And, you know, I got a lovely happy birthday wishes from Kevin um, on my birthday. So it's just, it's very dear. I mean, and it's, it's like a, a high school reunion kind of thing where you just, always will feel connected to these people. And we've got some more people who called in. We have Jackie online, too. Jackie, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Uh, we're live with Susan Eisenberg. Yes, hi, hi Susan. Hi. <laughs> so hi. you guys mentioned Injustice 2 earlier, and that's kind of where my question comes from. Um, I've always heard actors say that when you receive a role, there's like this deep kind of psychological process involved as far as who is this character? You know, what are their motivations? How far are they willing to go to, to reach their goals? And so I'm just wondering, that iteration of Diana was so different than anything that I've seen going all the way back to the 70s and all the way forward to now. How does that process change from like Justice League Doom to Justice League, from, I'm sorry, Injustice 2? You know, it's... Um it's about just changing my, you know, I can't be involved in it. Like, I can't say, well, I like, a, you know, Justice League Wonder Woman better than this Wonder Woman. It's like, that's not my job. My job is to um, give the creators of Injustice what they want. And what they wanted was a dark character. And she is dark and she is ruthless. Um but there's a reason for it. And I had to make that okay for, for myself, for the performance. I mean, I tried not to judge it and yet I would tease all the creators who were, you know, the writer and, and the producers that were there with me in the session. I would tease them that they owed me a, um, you know, a, uh, like a heroic wonder woman after this game because she wasn't heroic on any level to me. But again, I had to think of her, I think, as less as Wonder Woman, the Wonder Woman I knew and had such strong feelings and attachment to, and just a character. And who is this character? And what are her needs in the scene? And what is she about in the scene? And play it like that. And of course, it was written like that. And so that helped enormously. And all her exchanges um, with the other characters. You know, it's at the end of the day, you're, you're an actor working for a, a writer and a director, and um, they were there in the session with me, and they were coaching me all along. So, again, not my favorite thing to do. And I, get, I love playing villains. It's just hard for me to play Wonder Woman as a villain because I don't ever see her that way. Um, and I think we have enough villains in the world right now that I think, it, you know, the more heroes, the better. But um, you just have to make your choices as an actor and stick to those choices. To piggyback a little bit on Jackie's question, you did get to play uh, a kind of evil version, not evil per se, but uh, when you did the Justice Lords episode of Justice League where it was the alternate Earth, you guys were all ruling thing with an iron fist. Did that ever come into play at all when you were prepping for Injustice 2? Like, I've already kind of done this, let me kind of channel that. A little bit, but again, it was a totally different creative team. 
So they very much had their own ideas of what they wanted. And, um, you know, I'm not creating this in a vacuum. So there is a voice director there. There is a writer there. There is a direct, you know, a producer there all telling me their vision, which is the same vision. Um, They're all on the same page of what their vision is. And, again, that's my job to make their vision um, on the page come off the page in in my um, in my telling of their, you know, of the, of their story. So I, I was aware that I had done it before, um, but not to this extent (laughs) (laughs) and not for that long a period. I mean, it was just, it was a lot of sessions and it was a lot of um, badassery, if I can say that on the air. Sure. Why not? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Jackie, I hope that answered your question. Yes. And it was just weird for a lot of reasons because I'm kind of a wonder bat person and, you know, she was involved with Superman there. So a little bit of part of me was like, right. ew. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, but, but, Jackie, I think we all know how I feel about, about wonder right, and right. Superman and, and, and all of that. So yeah, no, it's, it, but again, like it's not me, Susan. I, I it's not me. It's, it's, I'm playing this character and I have to put my feelings as hard as it is. I have to put my feelings aside. Um, not always a strong point of mine. Um, but I, I tried. <laughs> and so hopefully, hopefully it came through in my performance. Hopefully. I don't think, I don't think, uh, Clark Kent would sing Am I Blue the way Bruce Wayne would. That's all I'm going to say. Right? He wouldn't do it as well either. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. No one could do it as well. I mean, seriously, uh, Kevin has a beautiful, beautiful singing voice. So, yeah. I mean, everyone knows I, I'm not a big believer of the Superman Wonder Woman pairing. I don't, I, you know, to me, he's always belonged to, he and Lois are the romantic duo right. there. Um, and I just, you know, I just think of Christopher Reeve and, and you know, uh, Margot Kidder. I mean, to me, they were as magical as magic gets. Yep, I, I would have to agree. Jackie, thank you so much. I've got your information thank down, you, so uh, we'll put you in for that drawing for uh, Justice League versus Fatal Five at the end of the show. Thanks very much for calling. Thank you both. No problem. Thanks, Jack. Uh, Joey, do we have to take a break now? Do you want to get some calls when we come back? Yeah, we're okay. We're going to take a break. We've got a couple of calls on the line still. Stand by. We're going to be talking all hour with Susan Eisenberg, so hang on. Everybody, this is Maria Canals Barrera. I voice Talk Girl on the Justice League, and you're listening to Geek to Me Radio. And thanks to Susan working her magic, uh, she was able to convince Maria to come on. Uh, she's been great and uh, setting me up with Andrea Romano. Uh, the only person I've not had of the Big Seven has been Carl Lumley, but from what I've heard, he's very <laughs> difficult to pin down. He is. He's so busy, and I don't think that he um, loves, you know, doing a lot of publicity things. Mm-hmm. So he, he is tough, but uh, he's just the loveliest guy. So I hope that happens because he'd be he'd be a wonderful guest for you. But it was so great to hear Maria during the break. He played the bumper, and it was just oh, she, it's just so hot girl is just. She really deserves some more attention as far as I'm concerned. She's a great character. And I love that they put her in the Justice League series because obviously there's always that seventh spot that they swap out with either Aquaman or somebody. And I love that they went with Hawkgirl because that really was uh, the the, the play between uh, Maria and Phil as Hawkgirl and Green Lantern, that romance aspect. And even the two of you had a scene or an entire episode where the two of you fought side by side. Uh, It was it was a great uh, chemistry with the whole cast, really. It really was, and I think that's just lucky. You know, I, I, um, I mean, everyone. I think we we talked about that when we were all in Denver together. That it's just, um, it was like it felt magical when we were all together and when we got to read those scripts, and it still does. So that, you know, uh, lucky seven on that one. I mean, I just I think we, Andrea, Bruce, they put together this incredible team, and. You know, we still feel it. So, yeah, but it was great to hear her. And and, and you're right. She and Phil together, that romance uh, was glorious to watch. And the two of them, they're such great actors. 
so um, it, they just brought that romance to life. Like, it was just like, wow, that's intense. <laughs> I, I would just, I'm, you know, I'm a fan. I would just sit there in the room and, and just be bowled over by their performances. And we do have a couple other callers. We're going to go right Great. to line one. We've got Tyler on the phone. Tyler, how are you? I'm good, thank you. And uh, what's your question for Susan? For Susan, what was it like voicing Wonder Woman back in Justice League and Justice League Unlimited? What was it like? It was uh, a a dream come true. Um, It was very, very intimidating and nerve-wracking in the beginning because I had never been uh, a lead on a TV show before, on a series, like a series regular. I had done a lot of guest starring roles and um, recurring roles on other shows, but I'd never been like one of the main characters. And, you know, I was really, really nervous uh, in the beginning. And then once I found a comfort level with the character and her voice and, um, and with my own acting chops a little bit, uh, I just, it was the best job. I, I um, look back on it with such fondness because it really was glorious getting to work with those brilliant writers, those directors, those actors, the guest stars. And there's nothing I can say about it that wasn't enjoyable. Um, And if you look at who our production team was, you know, it's the best of the best in the business. And everyone from Dwayne McDuffie, Stan Berkowitz, Bruce Tim, Andrea Romano, you just don't get better than what we had on that show. I would have to agree. Tyler, thanks so much for your call. I've got your information down, and we're going to do that drawing for Justice League versus Fatal Five. You are in that drawing. Thanks very much for calling in today. We've got another caller. I think we've got Larry on the line. Larry, how are you? Hey, I'm on. <laughs> I can hear it. Hey, how are you doing? Good, good. Say hello to Susan. Hello, Susan. How are you doing? Hi, Larry. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm doing all right, I guess. Um I, I just had one question for you, and that is everybody oh. is talking about it on Twitter, and that is is the, uh, would you be willing to do a solo movie? Uh, I mean, movie, excuse me, TV series, animated series. Uh, they've had Batman and they've had uh, Superman, and uh, they talked about the Trinity thing. <laughs> and I was just right. curious if you'd be interested in doing a solo because uh, that's a big thing really on Twitter that I've seen so far. You know what? I'd be honored to do it, and I'd be thrilled and delighted. But um, it's not really my say. I mean, I wish it were, but it's the powers that be over at Warner Brothers. They have to want me to be their Wonder Woman. And they have a lot of other actresses um, that they use and that they like to um, have voice the character in addition to me. I mean, they they obviously have asked me to do it many times, but... um, I'd be thrilled. I mean, you know, between that and the, and a movie and video game, um, I think Wonder Woman has a lot to catch up on in terms of uh, vehicles for her because Batman and Superman have had so many um, wonderful projects, and I think that she, she needs to catch up. So, yes, I mean, the answer would be I'd be overjoyed uh, to be, you know, to voice her in an animated series. But, again... Um, you know, there are a lot of factors that play into that and me not being a big celebrity (laughs) doesn't help my cause too much. Um, but I'd be honored. I really would. And I think a lot of people too, they look at, uh, I've, I've heard this anyway, obviously I'm not an industry insider, but I've heard that some people, oh, that person's got a lot of followers on Twitter. We're going to cast that person for this role because they know they'll bring their, and you've got a very good following on Twitter. I mean, you are very interactive with your fans. So I, I can't think that would do anything but help you. Right. But I don't have, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not, a, you know, a celebrity, certainly. And I also, I don't do on camera. Um, I made a choice in my career early on uh, to do voiceover, not on camera work. And while I would, you know, obviously, if somebody came to me and said, we're doing this extraordinary project, we'd love you to play Wonder Woman, um, like as a wink to the audience, I would be honored to do that. Um, the people have been asking me about the crossover or if I'm going to be in the Wonder Woman movie in a cameo. Um, you know, and obviously I'd be like, I can't even tell you how thrilled I'd be to do any of those things. Um, but again, I think my lack of celebrity hurts me a little bit in that regard. 
Um, you know, certainly uh, Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy are huge stars, and I think they get to to be in a lot of projects that I would love to be in, but don't get asked. Um, because again, I just don't have that, those numbers, that celebrity, whatever you want to say, um, working in my favor with for those things. So if you're out there and you're listening to this right now, we need to boost Susan's Twitter numbers more. So go to Twitter, <laughs> follow her at Susan Eisenberg, the number one, get out there and follow her right now. Let's get her in more projects. <laughs> Larry, thanks very much for your call. I have your information, and we're going to get you in that drawing, too, for the Justice League versus Fatal Five at the end of the show, so keep listening. Thanks very much for calling. Um, We're okay on time? We're good? Joey says we're good. We'll go a little further. Um, I uh, I mentioned off-air that I did speak to Andrea, and uh, that interview will air next week. So if you're listening to this right now, make sure you tune in next week. We've got a a full hour with Andrea Romano. And she was even saying, Susan, that, uh, the, the, you know, I asked her about casting the people for all of her series, just like, and she said that you're really like her children. She casts you and she worries about you and she, you know, uh, stays with you. And I know she said that, uh, you and her are still friends and she feels that way about all of you, but she said she was so delighted that she got to be involved in the casting of Justice League and, and, and see where this show went and work with all of you. And she said it's still one of her very favorites. Yeah, you know, uh, she just, I can't separate me from her when I talk about the character because she, more than anybody, um, helped me find the voice for Diana in Justice League. So when I think of the show, when I think of my role in the show, um, I think of her always. I, I joked with her once that I've never done an interview where I didn't mention her name. And it's true because uh, she's so integral to um, the creation of, of my Wonder Woman. And, you know, she's worked with me on so many projects. And, you know, she's just unforgettable in that way. Not, you know, not only to, but to all the actors she's ever worked with. She's, you talk about celebrity. I mean, Andrea, for somebody who's not even on social media, she's just, she's just so beloved and such a star. And she worked on so many shows that were part of people's childhood. And that can never be underestimated. Um, it, when you create something and you're part of something that people watched when they were young and they met these characters through your voices or your direction... Um, or your casting, you know, that stays with people for a lifetime. So she's, she's, you know, she's special. She's just very, very special. I absolutely agree. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to take our next break. We're going to come right back. If you'd still like to call in, we've got Susan for the whole hour, 844-855-1380, toll free. Call in and say hello to Susan. We'll enter you for that Justice League versus Fatal Five on Blu-ray. Stand by. This is Diane Pershing, the voice of Poison Ivy, and you're listening to Geek to Me Radio. We are back. I want to make sure we tell you about our sponsor, Marcus Theaters. Uh, Marcus Theaters and now Movie Tavern. If you have one of these locations near you, and there are 11 different states across this great country where you can go see a movie in a first-class setting. They still have their Enchanted Tales series, $6 admission. Uh, right now, September 13th through the 15th, they are showing Cinderella. Uh, so that is, uh, you can go out and see the original Disney Cinderella movie for just $6. That's the last day of that today. They've got their retro movie series, and they've got a lot of great movies around right now. Uh, the last one I saw that I really, really enjoyed was Ready or Not, which was a lot of fun. I it wasn't what I expected. If you haven't seen that yet, I recommend that one. Downton Abbey is out this coming weekend, and that's going to be a great uh, show if you're a fan of the series, and I was. I watched every episode. I cried when Matthew died. I was ridiculous, but I'm very excited to see the movie. And if you're going to see one of these great movies, you may as well do it in the best possible surroundings with the big DLX screens and the big recliners, and some of them even have the little heated seats. Uh, very comfy. Don't doze off. You get yourself a large cappuccino or a beverage of some kind. Uh, kick back and enjoy the movie in the best possible surroundings. Marcus theaters.com is the website 
You can buy your ticket right there in line, find out the location closest to you, even check out their menus for all their various food and drink options, have dinner and a movie all at the same place with one of their dine-in restaurants. Uh, good time will be had by all if you see your movie at a Marcus Theaters. That website, again, marcustheaters.com. We are joined this hour by Susan Eisenberg, and we were talking a little bit off air about uh, Susan was uh, mentioning all the anniversaries. It doesn't even have to be a 20th or a 25th, and we love seeing the people are posting. This is the 16th anniversary of this episode of Justice League. It's great. I know. It's so fun. I mean, because we have accounts that are just about the reunion, the Justice League animated account on Twitter, and then there's the Batman, obviously, um, the Batman account that's on Twitter and it, like these shows were so beloved, whether it was Batman, the animated series, Superman, the animated series, justice league, justice league unlimited. And I love that there are accounts now celebrating all these anniversaries and, you know, it used to be like the 20th, the 30th, uh, 50th, but now it's like, it was 16 years ago in four days that, <laughs> that this happened and everyone's like, yeah, and it, we're also nostalgic. I think that, you know, I think that's especially true in in challenging times. Um, and, I, you know, for me, these are challenging times just in terms of, I don't want to get political here, but just in terms of life. I mean, life can be challenging. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that we kind of cling to the things that make us feel good and safe and um, we remember fondly. So I, I just love that there are all these anniversary tweets. Every time I look on Twitter, I'm like, oh, my gosh. So it was 17 years ago. <laughs> 17 <laughs> years ago. That's not an anniversary, is it? You know, so it, it really makes me smile. And it, sometimes it makes me giggle. <laughs> and if you think about it, we're just two years away from the 20th anniversary of the original Justice League series, which doesn't seem possible. It really doesn't. It really, really doesn't. Um, and what better way to honor that anniversary than with a reunion? Am I right? Exactly. If they were to make that announcement on uh, whatever the whatever the exact day is, I'm sure JL Reunion on Twitter would know it. <laughs> the exact yes, date. JL Reunion would know it for sure. But yeah, that would be if they were to say, hey, 20 years ago, today, Justice League premiered. Uh, next year, we're going to have the original seven come back and we'll have Ken Schreiner back and we'll have Amy Acker as uh, as Huntress. And we're going to get some of the other team together. Uh, they're going to Clancy Brown will be back as Lex Luthor, Mark Hamill's Joker. Uh, that'd be fantastic to hear an announcement like that anytime, really. Don't if you're if anyone from WB is listening, don't wait for the anniversary. Give it to us now. That's fine, and then release it on the anniversary. We're we're yeah, we're, I know. I I think we've waited long enough, frankly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, all, all the people associated with it, like we, you mentioned earlier, Bruce Tim would be glad to do it. We said uh, Andrea Romano said right here on this show that she would come out of retirement to direct another one. So everyone's on board. The cast has repeatedly said that they would do it. Uh, so I really don't know what Warner Brothers is waiting for. It's like they don't want to make money. Yeah, uh, I, I, it makes no sense to me. But that's been, you know, I've been talking this talk for a long time. Um, long before it was hashtag JL reunion, I was you know, trying to get a reunion going because I just, I feel so strongly that, that it, it, it should happen. It just should. That's all I'm going to say. It just should. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, everyone's waiting for it. Uh, there'd be, there's no inopportune time for it to happen. So um, as we kind of wrap up here, we've got a few minutes left still. If anyone wants to squeeze in and make a call, uh, it's 844-855-1380, toll free. I, I want to say from anywhere, but I think if you're outside, I'm not sure if it, I think it works in Canada. Um, but if you're outside the United States, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to get through, but feel free to tweet at us because Susan and I are both very responsive on Twitter. Uh, as we wrap everything up here, Susan, I want to make sure we, again, let everyone know your website, SusanEisenbergVoice.com. You've got a list of all your appearances. So if anyone wants to meet you and why wouldn't they, uh, you're doing Pensacon <laughs> in 2020, Pensacon in beautiful Florida. Yeah, no, there's, you know, it's weird to me because we're already scheduling 2020 and um, I I have uh, booking agents, CelebWorks, who are, you know, just finding me, you know, all these cons to go to, and it's it's lovely. I mean, I'm I'm really looking forward to being out there, and I have I think a few more this year. Um, so it's I think I'll, there's one here in LA that I'll be doing um, in the very I, I think it's in October. Um, so yeah, so follow my website, or you can follow me on Twitter, and I try to keep people apprised of what's going on in that regard. And I think on Twitter, you're Susan Eisenberg, the numeral one. And on Instagram, you're just Susan Eisenberg. Is that correct? No, it's Susan Eisenberg one on Instagram as well. Susan Eisenberg was taken. 
James. And uh, so we had to go with the, I didn't go with the real Susan Eisenberg or the Susan Eisenberg. I just went with Susan Eisenberg one. Because you're number one, you're number one in our eyes. That's well, all that matters. All right. Well, <laughs> shucks. But so I know you said that you've got a couple other projects you can't talk about right now, uh, but we definitely will have to have you back on to talk about those because I'm excited about them and we don't want to get you in any kind of litigational trouble. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's one that's really exciting. It's, it, it is Wonder Woman Project, and I would love to come back and uh, chat with you about it as it gets closer and, and uh, it'll be discussed more publicly. But right now I can't talk about it. But I, I just encourage people to keep their ears open um, because there'll be some more Wonder Woman coming their way. So besides uh, the conventions, and you're working on these yes. two projects, and I know you're constantly making me cry by putting uh, pictures of puppies you need rescuing on Twitter. Uh, other, than, yeah. <laughs> other than that... You know, uh, I, I don't really do that too much on Twitter. I do more... I mean, I do that on Twitter, but I, I do more of that on Instagram. But it's just, you know, it's, it's such a thing for me, and I, I, try, to, I try to keep it light and, and joyful with the Dodo story. Yes. And then, of course, there's the realities of animal suffering... And, you know, as, as much as I don't want to be, quote unquote, a downer for people, it's, you know, these, these, you know, these uh, animals need our help. Uh, they can't do it themselves. They don't have Twitter feeds. So I, I, along with so many others, want to, you know, be the voice for these animals in distress. Yeah, I, if, I've always said if I had the money, I would get a huge, huge farm and I would adopt every single animal that needs rescuing, I would, regardless of age. Uh, I would just I would take them all and I would I would be the crazy dog man. Right. And so, you know, how many people say that to me? And, and I think so many people feel that way. If we only had the money, if we had the farm, if we had the huge backyard, uh, you know, like we would all do that. Um, so for all those people out there with huge backyards and tons of money, <laughs> <laughs> send it to the animals. They need your help. Exactly right. Yeah, we, we I always do rescue dogs. We've got one now, little Grimlock, who's uh, nine years, a little over nine years old. And uh, he's he's my little boy. I always take uh, take good care of him. And I always say, if I had the room, I live in a condo. I'd at least get a couple more. But he he's very much an only child. When we mentioned bringing other dogs, he will have none of it. So that's that's well, that. You know what? I, you know what? We Oliver, you know, was an only child, and then we got we rescued Bravo, and who was about thirteen when we rescued him. And Oliver, you know, not thrilled. <laughs> kind of waiting for for Bravo to go like find another home, um, but that's not going to happen. He's with us, and you know it's it's an interesting dynamic because it's like you know being the only sibling. I mean, being only only child, and then a sibling comes along, and you're like, hey, wait, what 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 what's this about? So Oliver's not that pleased. I'm surprised he hasn't called you and talked to you about it himself because he has grievances about it. But um, he's been a total gent, and he's been very kind to Bravo. But I think any day he would just, you know, if we weren't looking, he'd be like, hey, dude, there's the back door. Right. Take it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Susan, as always, it's been an absolute delight. Uh, we mentioned uh, the Instagram and Twitter, Susan Eisenberg, the numeral one, and Susan Eisenberg, voice.com. Thank you so much for being on air. Thank you for being a wonderful ambassador and spokesperson for Wonder Woman and this Justice League reunion. And we'll talk to you again very soon. Terrific. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Anytime. We are going to go ahead and take our last break, come back and very briefly wrap things up, so stand by. Hi, this is Andrea Romano. I happen to be the voice director for many animated series, including the Justice League. You are listening on Geek to Me Radio. We have just time to wrap things up. Andrea Romano will be on next week. Make sure you check out discoverstcharles.com, Discover St. Charles uh, for an historically good time. Tons of things to see or do. The premier sponsor, and they would not be, uh, we would not be on the air without the backing of wonderful historic St. Charles. Check out the website, plan your trip, Discover stcharles.com until next week my friends thank you paradise island good night